When we talk hazing, what comes to your mind? Perhaps you remember a phone call or the first days of university, the nicknames, the dirt and the games of doubtful taste? University hazing started in the Middle Ages with the aim of preventing disease. At the time, the candidates to the university had their hair shaved, their clothes burned and classrooms separated from those of veterans. Also that the illnesses were not disseminated in the academic environment, which gave a social status to their regulars. It was a little later in German universities that this scenario was transformed and the deal with freshmen took on sadomasochistic and violent practices. The new students began to be labeled as irrational animals that needed to be domesticated by the veterans. The idea then started that freshmen should undergo a battery of tests and provocations to have the right to participate in university life. It is a fact that there is an ambiguity in the social representation of hazing, that is, in the way people understand these practices. At the same time that they are considered cooperative experiences, they are also understood as experiences of suffering. If, on the one hand, there is the character of play, integration and fun that seeks to welcome the freshmen, on the other hand, there is the character of violence, obligation, abuse and harassment. Thus, university hazing can be compared to an iceberg, which leaves visible only its smallest part, while the largest and most dangerous remains hidden. But then, what is hidden in the hazing? The psychological suffering derived from the humiliation resulting from the supposed games, often invasive and with a strong sexist and racist content. In this way, they reinforce gender asymmetry and social inequalities, perpetuating prejudices and power relations. The daily violence of hazing practices, especially because the media gives visibility to hazing called violent, characterized by physical violence and tragedies. Thus, all moral violence that goes through the hoax is masked, as if it were not important. The subjective reasons why the subjects accept to participate. What's the fun of getting dirty on the city streets, asking for money for the veterans' party? What is the fun in subjecting colleagues to vexing situations? What are the psychological motivations of freshmen and veterans to continue these rights? The collective reasons why society keeps hazing. Is it in your interest to maintain a tradition that reinforces social hierarchy based on knowledge power? In other words, whoever knows more commands, whoever knows less obeys. Wouldn't the university be just a place to question the maintenance of the status quo, the current social order? But how will a health professional realize the essential values of his profession, which must be based on respect, care and empathy, if his university experience already reinforces disadvantages such as disrespect, humiliation and submission? The student's ethical training takes place especially in situations like this, in which the hidden curriculum has a strong influence on the attitudes of the future professional. As an alternative to traditional hazing, the so-called solidarity hazing was created, which is nothing more than a way to welcome students through meetings and or scavenger hunts to collect clothes, food or even blood donation campaigns. But can hazing be considered solidary if this term has as its main characteristic the subjugation of the other? Is it worth adding a moderating adjective to this social phenomenon full of historical and cultural issues or would we just be legitimizing its violence? Even though they are renamed, whether through solidarity, light or integrative hazing, these activities favor the occurrence of several moral conflicts and ethical problems that need to be faced. Looking directly at the real size of this iceberg is the first step in transforming our culture of academic and social violence. The hazing debate does not exist just to question individual behaviors. Significant social changes are necessary for civility to be promoted by respecting the values of equality and human dignity. For this to happen, the university and everyone who participates in it 
must foster collective dialogue and critical reflection on this traditional practice. Society as a whole is co-responsible and can play an active role, making the issue more visible and problematizing.